the Near Light 6-star selector features much more operators than the Autumn 6-star selector, going all the way to Passenger as the latest released operator. This video will attempt to break down my personal recommendations for the 6-star selector in a meta context and which operators you should consider going for. Note that this tier list is not based on absolute power, but rather relative power based on what other operators you have the potential to choose from in the selector itself. Last but not least, if you want to go for your waifu or fun choices, there's nobody stopping you. In the uncontested tier, we have two operators, Surda and Mudra. If you're missing either of these, it's highly recommended to grab the other as they are both phenomenal operators that will completely change how you deal with a map. Surda is Surda and everyone has seen memes about how ridiculously strong she is and how she makes the game a breeze, which honestly isn't an over-exaggeration. Contrasting to Surda's bonkers damage, we have Mudrock with her bonkers sustain, which makes her almost immortal in every map she's in, combined with some busted damage on skill 2 and skill 3. If you don't have both, I'll recommend picking Surda if you're a newer player, but Mudrock if you have more developed the DPS units such as Chowter, AF Yala, and Silver Ash. Before getting into the lower ranks, I'd like to note that these operators are sorted by order of priority within their tiers, of course from left to right. In S tier, we have operators that are incredibly strong and would have been at the top tier if Surda was not in the game, and we have a lot of them. Silver Ash, Bagpipe, Eafiala, Thorns, Axia, Ifrit, and Mountain are all phenomenal choices for your roster, however there are some caveats included. The positions of Thorns and Mountain can be switched. Given that beyond two lane holders, the values of other lane holders drops drastically because you'd rather have other burst options in your squad rather than more lane holders. Because we're working on the assumption that you have both Surda and Mudrock before considering any options on this list, you'll basically have two lane holders and be searching for the third when considering Thorns or Mountain when at the bottom of the priority list, and I don't think that's worth sacrificing over Axia or Ifrit's power. I think everyone knows why they are this high, but I'll try to justify why I rank them in this specific order within their tiers. Silverash above Aya is probably rather controversial, but it's evident that Aya has been going down in value slightly over the years, with Surda's prevalence causing Hypergrowth to add more high res enemies, which Aya Fiala might struggle with. Of course, she's still a phenomenal unit and very high on this list in general, but I think it's pretty clear that Silverash has surpassed him at this point due to ground powers being more flexible, him having better coverage, and also his role being harder to replace and not being power crept by basically anyone. As for Bagpipe, she was one of my considerations to put on the same tier as Surda and Mudrock, albeit as a weaker choice. However, I've decided to center this list around more general players, so if you're looking for a CC recommendation, Bagpipe would be up there with Surda and Mudrock. Thorns and Mountain are both incredibly solid lane holders, and having one of them combined with Mudrock will make your life incredibly easy. With regards to Axia, a lot of people think she's power creeped, and objectively it might seem like she is, but I think a lot of people fail to take into account that the game just progressively gets harder and harder over time, and it's inevitable that all operators will lose some of their strength. Axia looks like she scales worse against defense, but she also has the highest DPS potential in the game, and she can easily pull off some insane damage even without a full buff squad and only with a Warframe, which is really applicable in general content. And well, Ifrit is just fucking nuts. You have a 100 res enemy, put on Ifrit skill 3, and bam, that enemy has basically regular res. Moving down a tier into the A tier, we only have 3 units, and those are Saria, Phantom, and Suzerain. Suzerain is this high on the list due to the unreplaceability of her role and generally how insane she is, but for a lot of regular players, she could be bumped down one tier. I think everyone would know why Saria is this high, she's a very very strong healing defender, she's basically always going to be on your squad unless you're in the very very late game where you are not going to have any defenders except Mudrock, and her skill 3 makes for some insane arts debuffing skills. Phantom is one of the best generalists in the game with incredibly high potential in regular content, in CC, and especially in blind runs where he is one of the most phenomenal units ever. Moving down a tier again, we have Nightingale, Schwartz, Weedy, and Angelina. Weedy is in a similar situation to Suzerain above in the sense that she's very unique and very strong, but a lot of players wouldn't want to utilize her full potential or can't in general content, so she might be bumped down one tier for a lot of people. Nightingale is a unit that's far better at general content than most people think, owing to arts damage being objectively harder to deal with than physical damage in almost all scenarios due to how the damage formula works. She basically negates all arts damage and hypergrowth making physical based enemies can almost entirely be attributed to Nightingale's existence. 
Schwartz is a unit that a lot of people like to underestimate as well, comparing her to a budget shelter or a slightly better Fartuf. In actuality though, you can think of her as a physical Ifrit skill 3, also condensing all of that debuffing potential into pure damage. Not many operators can get up to 4.5k on a single hit with a relatively low attack interval, and Schwartz is generally one of the best supporting DPS units when it comes to killing a tough boss. Finally, we have Angelina who's generally all around just a solid unit, decent slows, okay DPS, but offers a great amount of utility, although with how contested spots are in an endgame roster, I very rarely used her in the past few months. One step lower, we have the so-called average units, and observant viewers might immediately think, why the fuck is Blaze here? Isn't she a very good unit for general content? And the answer is, she truly is a great unit for general content. However, bringing back what I talked about earlier, we are only going to choose Blaze if we've already gotten basically all of the units in the above tiers. So you have Mudrock, Thorns and Mountain by the time you're choosing Blaze and at that point you are going to have 3 lane holders and you're adding another basically worse lane holder onto the mix which you probably wouldn't be using 4 of in a general squad. Most players when they have an E2 Mudrock, Thorns and Mountain would not even consider building Blaze and so Blaze is really low on this list. However, she's still higher than the other options given that there are still some players that like to play lane holder knights and Blaze is still very good for that. In addition, she's also really good in chapter 10 due to the mechanics there. Ark does rank the highest because he's a really fun unit to play with and he's one of the units that will actually be regularly utilized in an endgame roster as opposed to the other units which generally speaking are outclassed in either the DPS department or the utility they provide. Well, Ark is one of the two units that offer a strong buff individually in the game, with the other being Warfarin. Saga's overall power level is substantially higher than what this ranking on the list provides, but well, Bagpipe is just such a strong unit, and it's one of the units that you would definitely pick over Saga in the selector, so her value in this selector is significantly lowered. Passenger and Archetto are here because of how good they are in IS2, even though options exist in the higher echelons that heavily outclass them for general content, such as AF for Passenger and Exia for Archetto. Kyobi and Rosa are just generally solid units with their respective niches that will shine when time comes. Kyobi has the counter death, which is very useful in specific events, and Rosa's bind is one of the strongest sources of consistent multi-target hard CC out there. Now moving on to the less desirable choices, I personally wouldn't recommend buying the selector if you're aiming for any of the choices in these two tiers, unless of course for waifu reasons. Eunectus's Gundam of course has some insane potential which is why she's at the top of the non-recommended units, however the conditionals make it objectively worse than say Sudo or any of the other broken units on this list and in year 2022 we're in no short supply of strong burst skills that can be activated without any conditionals. Heligar's in a similar situation where his S2 has some very high damage potential but again it's locked under a conditional and the physical dodge is becoming less and less useful in an era where most enemies are art focused. It is the case that Heliger is given less focus than he's actually worth but he is still not a top recommendation in my books. Beyond that, Blemenshine has good applications but most people wouldn't want to use her, the same with Magellan. And in the last year, Shining is mad because Physical damage works in the sense where you either negate it completely or it is so high that you can't negate it. Especially with most of the threatening damage being arts nowadays, Shining is becoming less and less useful especially when you can soak up a lot of damage without her in the first place. Chen's skill 3 has some amazing burst and she's easily the worst bad out of the Moody Blues but Chowter is just so overwhelmingly powerful that it is very hard to justify putting Chen in your squad. And the rest just follow easily, Siege is bad honestly. Skadi is bad again, Hoshi is just a brick that does nothing, and well, Mostima is basically useless. So that's my recommendations for the Neolite 6 star selector. If you have any feedback, please leave them in the comments below and have a great day.